Welcome to Clay's Cortex. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to episode number nine of Clay's Cortex, the podcast. Uh, I'm Curtis, and uh, I'm the person talking today. But um, yeah, so thank you for tuning in. We're gonna be talking about um, more of a training or exercise type thing today as a topic. And um, if you follow me on Instagram, again, it's Clay's Cortex. Uh, I, I put a post about what I was going to be talking about today and some of the questions that come up when it comes to running faster, like what should I do and so forth. So um, the title of today's podcast is Sprint Like Usain Bolt, right? Who doesn't want to run as fast as that guy? It's crazy how fast he is. I mean, his land speed is just stupid, right? He's a super long bodied guy good strides, great running form, and he just kills it, right? Like he'll finish a race and look behind people, right? Like you look at the last, if you Google it, you'll be like, oh my gosh, that dude's looking back at people instead of just focusing on the, he's that fast. He doesn't have to look at the end line, right? Or the finish line. So again, this is gonna go over the steps to help yourself, you as an athlete or parents, things to think about when trying to hire a professional, strength coach, uh, exercise professional, whatever it may be. Um, that can help your kid run faster, some things that you should look for, right? So it's just a title, right? Like, I don't expect everybody to run as fast as Usain Bolt. It's a way to kind of grab your attention so we can get into the deeper topics of the things that good or excellent strength coaches, people that train athletes and so forth, think about when implementing programs to help athletes run faster. And there's a couple things that are also um, responsibility of you because it's a two-way street, right? So we're gonna talk about some of the steps or areas today that you're going to want to focus on based off of what I've seen with practical use, scientific research, to help you um, run faster and so forth. So let's be real, okay? There's some people that genetically are just fast, right? They can just run. You're like, holy cow, how is that kid so fast? He's 10. Look at how fast he's moving. He's faster than everybody. He can, he can run, he can, he can cut, he can do all these things, but his sprint form, he just burns people, right? It's genetic, right? So if I was to give you one recommendation with, if that's the only factor, I would essentially say, make sure you pick your parents well. But the, <laughs> the funny thing with that is we don't get to pick our parents, obviously, right? So we're comp it's a decision that our parents make to come together, you know, boom, there's your genetic offset, right? Some people are just gifted. Right, they're just gonna run fast. They don't have, need a bunch of coaching. That's one, one factor. The second factor we're gonna be going over are for most people that are say mediocre or they're just slow. And they're like, hey, I wanna run faster. This, what do I need to do? I heard you're good at what you do. Or hey, I need to run faster. Cause that's a pretty common thing, right? Like if you look at in sports, every says speed kills, right? It's, an, it's a speed almost changes the, entire, the entirety of the game, right? You got somebody saying baseball or softball, it's on first base and they're fast. The defense is on edge because they could steal the base. In football, if a kick guy gets kick return, you're like, oh no, he's got the ball. We didn't get to him fast enough. He's got room to run. Oh my gosh, he's super fast, right? Basketball on the court, you're a breakaway. You're always open on a breakaway and nobody's ever gonna catch you. So you always got a layup because you're that fast, right? Soccer, same thing. You cut and adjust so forth. Track is obvious. If you're faster than everybody, you're gonna probably win, right? So we're gonna be talking about the steps and things to think about when trying to run faster, okay? And again, this is just my perspective, all right? Um, but there's four main things that I'm gonna kinda hone in on, but let me go through the list of things first. So one thing that I see with athletes, youth athletes coming in that wanna get faster, right? Is the one main thing that I see that they're having an issue with is rhythm. Most athletes that come in, you guys be like, what? They don't have rhythm. They don't have rhythm, okay? They don't know how to skip. They don't know how to jump. They don't know how to, or excuse me, they don't know how to, yeah, skip. They don't know how to skip sideways, backwards, forwards, obliquely, whatever it is, right? They have trouble doing any type of rhythm type thing within their body. And if you, we're meant based off how we're built, and I guess I get real nerdy with it, but no, let's not do that. Sorry, sorry. Our bodies have rhythm built into us, right? When we walk, there's a rhythmic type flow. When we breathe, there's a rhythm type thing. When our heart beats, there's a rhythm type thing. It's built into us. And when we lose rhythm within our body, it's not a healthy system. So for athletics, if you don't have a very high functioning system, you're not gonna be able to be the best athlete you can be. So the first thing I would work on is rhythm, okay? Any kid that comes in, I'm gonna watch them work on their rhythm. Might be ladder drills, might be hurdle drills, might be like, hey, we're gonna do a rehearsed 
type of thing to get some rhythm and build that in, okay? Then we start to randomize, okay? Then from there, I would work on form running, right? Teaching a kid how to form run is important, but you also gotta let them go, right? If you, if you, hey, keep your elbows at 90, don't get past here, they're thinking about all those things, right? Versus just being an athlete and going. So peace out, maybe when they're actually doing the running thing itself, diagnose and look at essentially, or look at yourself, film yourself man, I'm not doing very good with this type of rhythm. What's a drill that I can do that can help me work on my drive when I come through, <coughs> excuse me. What's something that I can do? And if you work on all those drills to work on the running aspect and integrating that all together, they'll do a lot better. Third, strength, okay? Adequate strength within your body or force that you can produce is gonna help you run faster. Let me give an example. Here when people come in, I give an analogy of a car, right? And I say, hey, 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 um, I always say little Johnny, little Susie. Let's pick some new names. Let's do little Zach, right? Little Zach and little Molly. That doesn't flow. Anyways, Zach and Molly, all right? If I'm talking to them during, hey, these are things we gotta work on and so forth, I'll ask them a question. I'll ask them essentially, hey, how did you get here today? They're like, oh, I came in a car. Well, I didn't drive my mom or dad. Did. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. So say your mom and dad, you're on the freeway and you guys are like, let's get crazy tonight. We're gonna go get ice cream for dinner and we're gonna see how fast we can go on the freeway with our car. <clears throat> so I asked them, hey, if your mom or dad is pushing the pedal all the way down, it can't go any further, right? It can't go any further. The car is gonna go a certain speed at the top end. And they're like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. And I asked them, how do you make the car, how do you get the car to go faster? And they look at me like, oh my gosh. I didn't come here to critical think today. I thought you were here to, you know, talk me about what you do and sell me and so forth, right? And that throws them off. But I want to get them thinking. So I'll get answers like, uh, go downhill. Like, oh, yeah, you can totally do that. Yeah, downhill, use gravity, that makes sense. And then like, you know, someone's like, I don't know, um, get a new car. I'm like, well, no, no, that certain car, right? And they'll give answers. Then I had a kid recently, which happens every once in a while, which is pretty cool to say, I bring it to the mechanic. And then one kid leveled him up uh, three weeks ago and said, I bring it to the auto-tune shop. And I was like, yes, yes. Why do you bring it to the auto-tune shop? Well, we need the car to have a bigger engine or be more efficient. And so if we have that, when we push the gas pedal down, the car is gonna go faster. I go, oh, so you have to take a step back, not run the, keep driving the car fast. It's not gonna go any faster. You bring it somewhere to work on it so that it can go faster, has the capacity to go faster. Like, yeah, like, that's strength training. That's what we're gonna do here. And they're like, oh, okay. So strength training can help you Build a more efficient, not always bigger, right? You can get muscle and gain size from working on doing strength training, but if you have a more efficient muscular system, you can also have the same effect as if you were bigger, right? The next thing that people talk about a lot is plyometrics, right? So plyometrics are like, uh, if, I, if I'm simple with this, box jumps, lateral bounds, broad jumps, you know, like jumping type motions is typically what people think is plyometrics. Where people in the exercise and fitness community, I'd say more strength coach community, is starting to branch out and trying to use upper body stuff, do plyometrics, rotational stuff, um, all everything like that. So it's cool, it's starting to expand. Plyometrics are very powerful. I, I use those here, right? The fifth one is time. It takes time to, as the title says, run or sprint like Usain Bolt. It's gonna take time and consistent effort over time for you to be able to run as fast as you wanna run. The cool thing is, is if you bring, when you're, say your car's not running very well, and you bring it to a mechanic, and they're like, oh, your axles are out of alignment, and we gotta rotate your tires, they do that, your car runs more efficient. Sometimes you just need a little tune-up, right? And then, oh, I'm back to running faster, or oh, wow, I'm running faster now after I got that little tune-up. That happens. But that's only a uh, acute change. We wanna have a chronic change of speed over time. Like, we wanna make sure that you're running fast over and over and over again, right? So, doing, Helping yourself get faster chronically in a good way takes time, okay? The sixth one is a tailored program. I put, sorry, tailored programming, but ta a tailored program, a custom program to you. What is it that you and your body need to run faster? What are the stimulus, strength training, running form, um, learning rhythm? What are the things we need to do to help you run faster or sprint faster? So that's a program built for you. There's no one size fits all, right? If you go back to the whole uh, podcast I did with Arthur about a chef and a cook, 
That's the difference between being a cook and a chef, right? What, are you gonna go somewhere that's gonna build you a chef type workout versus a cook type workout, all right? And then the seventh one, the last one is consistency. Being consistent with that, right? That's crucial. It's not a quick, oh, I'm gonna run faster and now I'm there, right? It takes time. You've gotta to continue to work on that skill, work on that craft, because running is a skill, right? Just like walking, right? Crawling, all that kind of stuff. When, like Our daughter's two now, but she can walk and do all that kind of stuff, but essentially, all of that is skill acquisition to do those things more efficiently and better. But if you get stronger and do those things, it'll help you run faster also. So they can all work together to get you the goal of, quote unquote, running like Usain Bolt or sprinting like Usain Bolt. So in this, in this episode, I can get into programming. I can talk about, well, this is where I would start with the kid and kind of go from there, blah, blah. And I guess with the number list I just gave you, those are some of the things I think in my head when I'm working through a sprint program, right? Um, but there's only four main ones that I think are the most important, all right? The first one's rhythm. A lot of people lose rhythm. A lot of athletes lose rhythm when playing their sport. Or just, they just, you know, we have all these constraints around us. We have shoes that constrain our feet, but they protect our feet. We have backpacks on their backs that minimize the amount of rhythm they have when walking, swinging their arms, their legs moving, because the backpacks are so heavy in the Seattle area, right? And then hopefully they fix that. They're trying to go online. I don't know exactly what they're trying to do, right? Then form. Running form is important, but there's a lot of people that get so locked into running form that they almost take away the ability of the athlete to be an athlete. And we want them to be an athlete and sprint and run and adjust and so forth, right? Then strength. Strength is, I believe, super important. I wouldn't even, sometimes I wouldn't even start with a kid doing any running or rhythm or running form stuff until we go to strength because they don't have any strength to quote unquote use. They're just kind of flailing around when they're running. Time and consistency. I'm going to combine those two, so I guess there's five technically. It takes time and consistent effort over time for you to reach that goal of running faster, right? Let me give you a case in point with me, okay? I was slow. <laughs> I was not fast, all right? Um, so my approach, how I went, was I didn't lift weights in high school because my godfather said, don't lift weights, just do your push-ups and sit-ups, focus on your breathing, make sure you're breathing well, and then do that all through high school because back when he played football in the NFL, they, um, weight training wasn't a big thing, right? And then his experience, he went to go weight train after his senior year, he got a hernia, right? But he probably went too hard right away, um, which whatever, right? But you gotta ease into those things, right? Now we know that research is different about strength training for kids and so forth and, and whatnot to help with athletic development and injury prevention. But my journey, I was legit five foot five, like 135, 140, 140 pounds when I graduated high school as a senior. I mean, graduated and in that fall, I'd be going into my freshman year of college. So I went to junior college around here, right? And so to me, I never lifted weights. And they were like, I, I, they're like, you're the starting shortstop, but you've got to get stronger. You've got to get bigger. So what did I do? I went to the local GNC here, which I love the guy, Jake. There. He's a great dude. He didn't steer me the wrong way. He's like, hey man, you don't need anything today. What you need to do is start eating well and working out consistently. And I was like, I just don't know where to start working out. And he goes, dude, just start. And I was like, man, that encouraged me, right? So what was cool in that story is he didn't push a supplement on me, which I was like, that's kind of rare because they're trying to sell and so forth. But he was like, hey, you just need to eat well, sleep, and train. And then if you get above those and you lock all those things in, maybe supplement some stuff. Who knows? Um, and I'm not talking like steroids, like that kind of, like eat some protein powder, that kind of stuff, just to clear that up. Because I know people hear that, like, oh, supplement? Does he mean... Anyways, that was a rabbit hole, or rabbit trail. So essentially, I started strength training. I started eating better, right? And I got, because I think I was working out and training, I actually like got that much bigger. I grew five inches, went to like 5'10", and I gained about 40 to 50 pounds within from November when fall ball was done to beginning of March. It was a lot of weight gain, right? So I got stronger. I was moving more aggressively. I wasn't super fat. I wasn't way more fast, but I was faster. So like, wow, that's super helpful. But then I started plateauing and realized, man, I have got to, you know, change this up. So my next year I did some more plyometrics, right? Still straight trained and I was consistent. I wouldn't recommend this for a lot, but I was training six days a week and I was training like almost like a bodybuilding style, but I was getting a base under me. 
Uh, I look back, I wish I was more efficient with what I had done, but you live and you learn. And I added in plyometrics and my speed got better. My goal was to break a seven, a, a seven second 60 yard dash. If I did, I knew college was gonna look at me and so forth. So I finally broke that, right? I ran like a six, nine, eight, six, then I got to a six, nine. I was like, yeah, I'm consistently around a six, nine. If I feel good, six, eight, seven, I'm, you know, I'm okay, I'm, I'm good, I'm good. So then I went to division one school and I thought, man, there's some resources here I could use, right? So I went to the track and said, hey, can I come work with you guys? He said, I don't know who you are. Who are you? So I'm a coach, started doing that, right? So I started showing up for those workouts, learning how to run. So then the form running, I was learning the skill of how to run efficiently. So from, I think that was like August of my jun junior year, August, like late jo August, early September, I went into form running, right? I was with the track kids doing that. I was definitely not the fastest. Those kids could freaking run, right? Like they, I was like, wow, you guys have been doing this forever. They're so efficient at how they move and everything, but I got better, right? So then in the spring, we have this thing called a pro day. So they bring these pro guys in and they watch us play against each other, so forth, and talk to the guys they want to talk to. And so, you know, that's, you know, you guys play college ball, you'll kind of experience that a little bit. So did that and we had to run a 60. And I was like, man, I gotta, I gotta, I'll run below a seven. I know I'm run below a seven, right? So I ran a six, seven, five. And I was like, oh my gosh. Clean. I did it again. Six, seven, two. It's like, wow, dude. And I remember I wrote it down because I was like, I gotta, I gotta beat this, right? Holy cow, I gotta beat this. So then I was pumped and they were talking to me and so forth. And not just for my sprint, but they liked how I played and so forth. And Honestly, in high school, I wasn't really that good. Like, I was a good defender, but I was so small. I had no, I had, like, hitting, I would always push the ball to the right. I had no strength. So then I went back and kept strength training, right? Our program at college was the, it, sorry, it incorporated plyometrics and strength training, all kind of stuff, but I kept doing the sprint stuff. I came back my senior year, ran a six, six, nine, then a six, six, no, a six, seven, one. So I was like, okay, I only got a few tenths off, but, I'm comfortable with that. I'm running that consistently. It's, it's faster. So again, my journey, I went from essentially strength training to adding in a little bit of plyometrics to form running while still doing that other stuff. And that helped. But the big thing throughout that time period, I was consistent with my training. I was training regularly. I was almost like investing into my athletic savings account or piggy bank. Every day I worked, it poured into that account and it compounded. Sorry, I clapped. That was probably pretty loud. It compounds on top of that to keep you growing, 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 right? And like, just like the stock market and everything, it ebbs and flows. It's never, it's never a linear change. You're never gonna go from like this, the next step's this, the next step's this, and you're gonna continue to get better and better and better. There, it's, it's an ebb and flow, it's an up and down, right? So, like I just said, it took time and consistency, but what I get a lot, what I see a lot, and try to educate people on, when they come in the door, it's not a quick, it's not a quick turnaround. What I mean by that is, People come in, they'll come in for say two months. They'll train once a week, twice a week. They're like, oh, I got to incrementally faster. I'm going to go somewhere else. If you don't give yourself time to essentially pour into yourself to grow and get better, you're not going to actually hit that end goal, right? So for example, on the whiteboard behind me, I wrote down this example of, sorry, I wrote down this example of um, training examples. So say like I take a high school kid around here that plays their sport nine months out of the year. So they have three months is when they dedicate to training. So if they train for three times a week for 12 weeks, excuse the Kaiser, it's running, running for 12 weeks, that's 36 sessions that they have to change their body and get prepared for the next nine months. If they go four times per week, it's 48 sessions. If they go three or five times per week, that's 60 sessions, right? You're like, wow, 60 sessions, you can do a lot. Now, if the more exercise days you have during the week, the more stress that is onto your body, right? So let's look at it from a different approach. On this side, I wrote down an athlete that trains two times per year, year round, okay? And they, you know, mess with their schedule, mix it up, kind of go from there. You look at this, there's 52 weeks in a year. They train two times per week. That's 104 sessions within a year. That's 104 hours or chances for you to progress and get better. 
and you're mitigating or preventing the amount of stress you're taking on per week because you're dispersing it out over the year, okay? They go three times per week, that's 156 sessions, right? So if you come up with a long-term goal of how to reach that and hit that, that time and consistency builds upon you reaching your goal of running faster, sprinting faster. If you look at it from like a two month stint or whatever it is, you're never gonna hit that as efficiently and it's gonna be almost an acute change versus a chronic change, right? Like people talk about losing weight, for example. When you lose weight, it takes time. If you lose it rapidly, it's probably not the best thing to do, right? Because of the fact that they bounce back and gain more weight. But if you do it consistently and slowly over time, it tends to stick, right? And if we're talking about why the, the one year approach is a better approach, that goes down to science and this thing called homeostasis, right? Our body doesn't like to change, but it has the massive ability to change. So you have to be chronic with the good stimuluses you put into your body. And the good stimulus in this example is training or, or uh, exercising, training, doing sprint training, whatever it may be, when it comes to you and what you need for your program. So give yourself time, buy into something. Let that person, that excess professional strength coach develop with you to help you reach those goals. It takes time. That's probably the most important factor. You can get stronger, you can get more explosive, you can do, but it takes time to reach those markers and continue to push them, right? So if you wanna sprint faster, you need to be dedicated to your craft. You need to work on all those things I talked about, right? So rhythm, form running, strength, plyometrics, it takes time, you need a tailored program, and you need to be consistent. If you're consistent, good things will happen. But if I break it down to those four main things, it's rhythm, we need to work on that, form running, strength, and then time and consistency. That time and consistency is a lot more important than you guys think. It makes a massive difference from you being able to reach your goals. Because like I just showed the example on the whiteboard, if you're watching this, if you pour into yourself in a year time basis, you're essentially building and building and building upon your savings account or athletic piggy bank, right? That's huge. Now, let me give you another example of this one behind me, okay? Say a kid trains for three months out of the year only and they start high school as a freshman as most do. Within a four year span, they have a, four, they have a one year training age. So, accumulated for the amount of time that they worked on trained, they've only got a year under their belt of actual training. If you look at the kid that trains year round, they step into college, they've got four years of training, right? The time shows it, the session, so and the session, the amount of sessions, sorry, that they do show that too. So think about that, right? Be consistent with your time, work on those things. But if you wanna run like Usain Bolt, you've gotta figure out where you need to start. And I would recommend going and finding an a exercise professional, a strength coach that can figure out on the spectrum of, okay, where are they at? What are the main things they need to work on? Let's start with those things and then we can integrate all those things together. So with that being said, I hope this podcast got you guys to think that it's not a, it's not a quick change of I'm going to run as fast as I can here. It's a gradual process to help you progress over time. You want to get a little bit better each day each week progressing towards that goal. And if you do that over time, it will solidify. But if you do it in a short span, it's gonna be here, there, you're gonna fluctuate up and down, almost like when you hang out with people that have like mood swings, right? Or they're kinda like, they're up and down. That's how your athletic career when it comes to sprinting is gonna be. It's gonna be, oh, some days I feel good, some days I feel bad, versus can we change that to where you consistently feel good and I'm running fast all the time or I'm being powerful and explosive. So I hope that that helped you guys to think a little bit about some of the ways to approach you running fast, or as the title of the podcast says, how to sprint like Usain Bolt. Think about those things. If you're genetically gifted or just fast, I'm gonna <laughs> clap my hands to you, right? Because you, you might not need to think about these things too much, right? Like you're a Ferrari when it comes to speed versus you know my car that's a forerunner, whatever it may be. So. If you're somebody that's in the middle or a little bit slower, hopefully this helped encourage you to think about what are some steps you need to take to run faster. All right? So thanks for listening. That's episode number nine of Clay's Cortex, the podcast. Um, check it out on YouTube if you want to watch it. Just search for Clay's Cortex or you can go on Instagram and just my name on there. Is it username? handle, I don't, whatever you want to call it, just search for Clay's Cortex. I'll keep posting information and every week I will post what the topic is going to be that week. So thanks for listening. Check me out also on iTunes and Podbean. All right, guys, this is Curtis Clay signing out.